Thanks for reviewing the Fonts.com web font service. This demonstration will show you how to display great looking, high quality fonts on your website quickly and easily. This is my website. Not bad, but I'd really like to use the same typefaces that are in my logo. Let's see how it's done. We'll start by logging into the Fonts.com web fonts portal. Adding web fonts to our site can be done in just a handful of steps. First, we create a project, then choose our fonts, assign fonts to our style sheet, and finally, publish a line of code on our web page. We can also modify our account settings using the fifth tab, My Account. The process begins on the Project tab. Let's start by naming our project. We'll name it Uncommon Grounds. Next, we'll add the domain names of any websites that will use the fonts. We can add as many domains as we'd like. Then, save the project. Now, we'll choose the fonts we want to use. We can search for fonts by classification, designer, foundry, or language support. We can also search by keyword. If we know the name of the font we want, we can locate it alphabetically. We can click the All link to browse the complete inventory. Or choose from a selection of featured fonts. In this case, we'll search by keyword. By clicking the font name, we can visit the font detail page. Here we can read a font description, see the file size, review the language support, and we can try it out. Once we've found a font we like, we can click the Add to Project button. We can add as many fonts to our project as we'd like. We'll add fonts from the Clarendon and alternate Gothic families because these typefaces are used in our logo. Now that we've chosen our fonts, we're ready to work on our style sheet. Here we can see all of the fonts we've added to our project. Next, we'll enter the names of each CSS selector used on our website and click the Add Selector link. The selector used for our first headline is named Dot Headline 1, so let's enter that now. The selector used for the second headline is dot .headline2. I'll also add the selectors for my subheads, navigation, and body text. Please note that we're entering the names of the CSS selector tags used on our website. The names of the selectors used on your website will likely be different. Now that we've added the CSS selectors, we can make our font assignments. Let's say we want to use Clarendon Light for our first headline. We select the font from the pull-down menu next to our Headline 1 selector. We'll repeat the process until a font is assigned to each selector. When we're done, we'll click the Save Changes and Update Style Sheet button. Next, we'll click on the Publish tab. Here we'll see a block of code. We'll select the code and copy it. Now we'll paste the code into the HTML of our website, just after the body tag. The next time our web page loads, it will display using our web fonts. Let's take a look. Here's the original. Now when the page is refreshed, it displays using the Clarendon and alternate Gothic typefaces. Changing fonts is easy. Now that our code is in place, we won't need to touch the code again. We'll simply return to the fonts.com web fonts portal to add new fonts to our project or modify our font selections. Let's say we want to try a heavier typeface for our navigation. We'll return to the Work on Style Sheet page and change the font from Clarendon Light to Clarendon Extra Bold. Just as we did before, we'll click the Save Changes and Update Style Sheet button. 
our new fonts will appear the next time the page loads, without touching the code again. This concludes the Fonts.com Web Fonts tutorial video. We hope we've demonstrated how easy it is to use our service to add great looking fonts to your website. If you haven't already, go ahead and sign up today and help us change the face of the web.